So Damien and Paul are from uh, Good Human. Damien Malott is Circular and Regenerative Economy Director at Good Human. And Damien believes in the power of connection to country, strategic design, innovation and collaborative business models working together um, to help drive transformation to create circular and regenerative living systems. Good Human is a strategic design consultancy dedicated to creating thriving systems and services for forward-thinking organisations that prioritise people and the planet. Um, they specialise in circular and regenerative economy strategies, strategies, digital design, product innovation and system development. And their approach integrates an ecosystem perspective across natural, social, cultural and built systems, leveraging strategic design and thinking to deliver dynamic um, researches, uh, services, and they offer people a range of um, services around design research, business and service and strategic design, um, circular and product design, cradle to cradle and eco industrial design. I'm hoping you see some of that. And of course, Leonie will be interested in this, CX and UX design, a social innovation and omni-channel marketing. So that is Damien and- And Tim, welcome Paul. Uh, Paul is a gun eye and more, apologies, Paul, my pronunciations are gonna be terrible here. Mon Monaro Na Negaro, man. Monaro. <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Uh, and is CEO of Federation of Victoria Traditional Owners Corporations. Paul's career purpose is to advocate for traditional owners' rights and interests to government, provide leadership and deliver outcomes that will ultimately restore health to country and communities. Paul's previous role include 14 years as the CEO of Victorian Aboriginal Corporation for Languages, as a non-executive director of First Nations Legal and Research Services. Paul is also currently a member of the Victorian Yama Yarrambai Economic Council, chairperson of, I'm going to let you step in there, Paul. Niki uh, Nanjan Nagarago Monero Aboriginal Corporation. Thank you very much and apologies for uh, my terrible pronunciations. Paul brings his knowledge, skills and networks to, close, uh, to work closely with traditional owners across the state to support their aspirations for community and country whilst taking up the challenge for self-determination and treaty. Paul strongly believes in returning traditional owners authority on country, drawing upon deep knowledge for the betterment of us all. Uh, welcome, Paul, and welcome, Damien. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Philip. Um, I think I'm going first. Ed, we've got to share a screen. Um, yeah, I can do that. You can do that. Thanks, Damien. No worries. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, uh, woman, Inji, Norange, everyone. My name's Paul Payton, as Tim said. Um, Gun I'm an arrow man, and um, I want to start by acknowledging country, acknowledging the, the lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people that I'm here um, and living on uh, and here this evening, and honour their, their elders, both past and present, and acknowledge um, their unceded lands that they continually um, fight to to maintain that connection to country in, in such a, uh, you know, a heavily built environment. Um, next slide. So, uh, so that's it. So yeah, my um, as oh, oops, go back there. <laughs> um, so but yeah, just a little bit about me. Um, growing up, uh, growing up on country, uh, with my family, with my elders who who have, have taught me everything I know, um, both my, my grandfather there who's who's teaching us about um, about spears and where to find those spears and the time of year to find spears and also you know, my, my grandmother and um, her 
her um, guidance and um, strong connection to culture, being a, a, a language speaker, and and um, them both alongside my parents uh, or my mum particularly, who who've guided me towards um, my career um, activities and 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 has driven me into into the spaces that I've um, worked in over the last few years and. Um, I found myself as uh, as after after fourteen years working in Aboriginal languages, now being the CEO of the Federation of Victorian Traditional Owners, which is a an advocacy body for traditional owners here in Victoria, and that uh, seeks to you know uh, seeks change and uh, through policy and legislation that's going to uh, recognise traditional owner rights and interests, enable self determination and and um, uh, embed a recognition in in um, the Victorian policy uh, and legislative landscape. So, so it's a it's a broad role um, that that is um, ultimately driven by uh, the impacts that we see on country and and returning traditional owners' rights and interests back to that and uh, um, creating the environment for which traditional owners can can practice um, practice culture uh, heal country and and uh, manage country into the future um, and developing strategies such as next slide the native foods and botanical strategy as a, as a response to to climate change and and um, looking at uh, some of the issues related to that industry alongside other other responses such as um, strategic responses such as water is water is life and and cultural fire strategies that that look at what are the what are the barriers to traditional owners being able to to um, practice culture um, practice you know um, practice um, fire management on country and and how do we respond that in a in a in a strategic way so uh, I'll leave it there and go to Damien. So hi everyone. Um, yes, so um, I've known Paul for about 13 years and just a little bit about my history. I grew up as a kind of Anglo-Saxon um, person in Hepburn Springs in Victoria. And uh, yeah, I, um, my country is the Jara country. Um, well, it's where, um, you know, I came as a young boy and, and grew up and learned a lot about the natural systems uh, from my, my father and my grandfather and, and relatives, um, but from a kind of Anglo-Saxon perspective, unfortunately wasn't taught um, anything at all about First Nations knowledge that existed there. And um, yeah, I had a um, typical kind of upbringing at that time in the late seventies. So I, I drew a, um, an Aboriginal person um, and took that to school and a picture of myself. Oops, sorry. Um, and the the teacher there um, annotated that drawing and said, um, well, this is a picture of a savage and this is me and I'm different from a savage. So my history started in, um, you know, in Australian history of the landing of Captain Cook. And I was basically taught racism from a, from a rate eight, um, young age. But, you know, fortunately, I... Um, that never kind of permeate, permeated into my my being, so I was very very fortunate um, to grow up with a good good family and a good um, good friends um, and and great teachers like like Paul and his family and lots of great people I've met over the years. So um, my my passion was um, eco industrial design and um, I guess growing up in the in the bush, um, I looked at um, uh, my kind of instincts and things that came through in my design processes and my flow states, and they were all seemed to be connecting back to these um, natural elements and anthropometric forms and a passion to know about biomimicry and um, and systems thinking. So, um, yeah, I guess it, um, I did a master's on kind of modular um, design and um, I was really delved into that time around the kind of locally acquired tacit knowledge and the importance of place and local materials and uh, that um, went really well um, and I continued that kind of work and then on returning to Australia I worked in um, digital system design and um, and kind of circular economy this is a, a, an ecosystem map for um, the prep which is a kind of packaging recycling evaluation portal so I, I mapped the kind of you know the woolies and the coal was kind of um, systems flow 
And um, yeah, so this would be first big kind of projects in the circular economy space. And and below here, just for interest for you guys, then the built environment. Um, this was a an app I designed for a modular mm -hmm. house and a marketplace. So basically, um, that's that's a bit of my background. And um, so I think over to you, Paul, for the next part. Yeah. Um, so when when Damien and I met, uh, one of the things that uh, was um, quite uh, sort of prevalent in, in 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 those conversations at the time, and I was working you know, in languages, but uh, Damien uh, through that introduction, he was and um, we were he sort of introduced me to to, to human centered design, which as we all know has kind of been a, a dominant design process in the last twenty years or so. So. Um, you know, it, it's I guess it's a it's a move um, that you know, that recognizes end users in the design process, but but didn't kind of you know marry with with my understanding of of, of country and my understanding of um, how how I think about things more holistically and um, and uh, and as we start to see um, more and more in today's uh, conversation is more around uh, country centered. Uh, approaches which recognizes the uh, the sort of the natural systems that exist around it and how we we as humans are, are part of that natural system and we need to um, be conscious of of that in order to um uh, to, to design a, an appropriate response and recognize that we're ultimately all dependent on on one another next slide so i think you know, that that starts to starts to correlate with um with some of the thinking um at, at around um seasonal calendars and what we see uh in seasonal calendars and just a, a few examples that I've, I've placed on the map here that are that are an an understanding of country at place you know an, an understanding of the of the ecosystems the time uh, and on country that we need to be able to um, react, respond, adapt, and 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 the the time of year that we're we're using particular resources all sort of driven by by our deep understanding of country that's been passed on through thousands of years. So that starts to in in uh, inform our thinking because as you'll see we're, we're sort of getting getting to heading towards the uh, the country centered circular economy that uh, that ultimately we're going to um, show you this evening so it it, it recognizes um that the the seasonal aspects and that and that knowledge of country that that happens at place and and when we get to the um when we get to the um circular model and then how we're going to apply that at place is is critically important Oh yes, so over to me. <laughs> um, so um, I was, um, I think it was about four years ago. I was working on the um, circular economy um, strategy and innovation project for Hepburn Shire and Alexander Shire, and um, you you recognise these um, uh, kind of R uh, strategies um, that we just talked about earlier um, around. Um, Tina talked about rethink, refuse, reduce. So we were looking at those, and I was thinking, well. We need to really look more about the kind of um, regenerative economy strategies that really uh, create a foundation for our circular economy strategies. So I was talking to Paul about what would recognition and reconciliation look like. And at the same time, Paul was working on the cultural landscape strategy with the Federation. And we realised that there was a, a leadership opportunity for First Nations people in, in the circular and regenerative economy space. So um, this kind of gave birth to our conversation around a the Indigenous donut and the um, country-centred circular economy model. Um, over to you, Paul. Yeah, so the, the cultural landscapes strategy is one of those um, traditional owner responses to being able to manage country and recognising that um, we see country differently to a, a European um, concept of, of, of land. And we want to be able to manage country for for their cultural um, cultural aspects, cultural knowledge, cultural importance, um, and recognizing that um, that they look different, and we want to be able to manage for those um, for those um, 
for those cultural considerations. So uh, the cultural landscape strategy seeks to um, restore that 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 understanding and embed that in the way that we manage country in a, in a alongside um, Western land managers on country. So the landscape cultural landscape strategy seeks to sort of um, sort of design that and look at what are all the critical elements to actually be able for us to achieve uh, managing country through a cultural landscape perspective mm -hmm. slide. So we started um, researching um, different kind of models to kind of um, describe what uh, Australian First Nations um, um, uh, indigenous donut or, um, you know, circular economy model could look like. And um, there's some great, great findings. So um, we looked at um, the relationist ethos by Auntie Mary Graham at Queensland University of Technology and who had a, and was a inc incredibly talented at um, translating uh, indigenous knowledge systems into kind of Western, Western words. Um, so I'm thinking. So um, that was very informative. Um, we looked at... Um, Maori um, translation of Kate Raworth's indigenous, uh, sorry, Kate Raworth's um, donut economics model. So, um, and like us, they they place country at the centre uh, of their model, whereas Kate put um, uh, environmental factors on the outside of her of her model and, and talked about environmental overshoot. Um, and what we found with our model, um, um, we searched far and wide, but. Uh, there was no um, concept uh, for environmental overshoot. So to, you know, to destroy the environment or to destroy country was to, to destroy yourself. It was just an impossibility. Um, so I'll let you talk to uh, this if you like, Paul. Yeah. All right. So, so <laughs> the, the model, as you can see, is informed by a lot of the, the previous considerations and, and, um, and it recognizes that country and spirit are at the at the at the center of our of our our being of our understanding our connections our, our our universe so that needs to be reflected in the model so caring for country and community are interconnected um, through culture so um, so we we're trying to reflect that through through the rings that you can see there um centered by by country and all the elements of country sky water plants animals people land and fire with with uh, with our spirit at the very center and then there's the uh, the rings that that go around it with those you can see the the country the seasons the obligations our community our law our, our trade and collaboration as well as the neighboring communities uh, and and trade partners that that sort of sit all around that. So we're trying to uh, reflect all of that um, in a in a in a diagrammatic sense to understand that that interaction between um, all those things and the considerations. And you can see the the sort of um, uh, sort of the, where's the participation loop? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, was... no, it's not there. Okay, we'll go back <laughs> to that. Yeah, yeah, that one. But we'll go we'll go back. <laughs> Um, okay. so, uh, yeah. so the participation loop is, is that, that participation of people on country and all that, those things, how they connect to one another. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, after you. <laughs> so we, we, we saw that, uh, you know, our practices of caring for country of our, our relationship with one another, the, the, the principles uh, of caring for country are, are strongly aligned to the you know the the you know the overall principles and intent of a circular economy as well as some of the recognizing that um that we've been we've been doing this for forever basically um and and uh and, and i guess it's a it's a recognition that um well, i guess that we should walk together welcome welcome and welcoming you know, Western thinking to the way that we've been doing things for a long time. So, how do how do we how do we sort of bring that together? And it's a it's an it's an offer to to the rest of the community that for us to walk together to care for country and thing and how we can um, build a thriving, restorative, resilient economy that can benefit everyone. So, it's um, it's it's it sits alongside um, the 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 R strategies and more. We'll, I think next slide is the S strategies which have been um, designed to 
um, to sit alongside that and and reflect our values. I think was this you, Damien? Oh yes, yep. Um, so we um, many of um, Pints and, and Palmers went by over a couple of years, and, and we worked on this model and and developed the S strategies. And um, Paul's intent was, oh, look, we like to give this to other traditional owners to adapt um, to to their country and their nuances and their um, and their ways. Um, so we developed a kind of quite a generic model that could be adapted by by different people. And there was also that intent. Paul said, look, I'd really like this to be something that wider Australia could utilise as design principles to kind of enable us to walk together and to, to share this way of thinking. Um, so um, to, to, there's a bit more information here. But, I've got you know, a very short presentation today, but um, this, this is a high level um, description of those um, 12 S strategies. And so the first kind of section is around country and that's kind of understanding your context and, and participation with place. And uh, many of the speakers have kind of touched on many of these elements already today. And uh, so that's um, around, you know, stewardship, um, the obligation to care for country, um, uh, seasons, understanding seasonal indicators and considerations, and a lot of that has that social, social kind of social, socio-cultural kind of context as well. Um, the seasonal calendars and you know, the many stories, um, but yeah, un you know, getting to know your local species and ecosystem relationships, um, your source, identifying indigenous um, sustainable sources. Um, you know, we had a conversation earlier about, you know, compacting the ground around houses and, and you know, this is not respecting um, natural water tables and, and, and natural, um, you know, permeable um, soils and things like that. So really getting to know your, um, you know, what are the original sources? Um, the next kind of um, a lot of strategies, there's all design principles around community and its ways of working and kind of guiding principles. So reflecting again some of our speakers about sharing and reciprocity, um, sharing abundant seasonal crops with neighbours, for example, um, sharing um, social impacts, so actions that contribute to societal well-being, supply chains, uh, sustainable, regenerative, fair and transparent um, supply chains. So, um, you know, um, this is all about fairness and sharing again. Um, systems, systems, not silos. So, um, you know, developing collaborative systems that um, by intent enable collaboration. And then the cultural lens or the different kind of cultural perspectives and strategies um, is around kind of scale, looking at country at different scales, like the macro, the, the meso and the, and the, and the uh, micro, sensing and responding, like, um, looking kind of building in feedback loops into your designs, for example, and um, and then adapting to change and um, synergy and time, taking a broader look of time. You know the kind of seven generation test and the and the beautiful um, First Nations concept of time of the every when, which is yesterday, today, and tomorrow all at the same time. When making considerations and thinking, it's not just the next quarter. Um, it's really taking that holistic look at time. And the song lines and stories, and this is like seeking from a from a kind of Western perspective, um, seeking publicly available inf information from the First Nations people, and about you know seeking their permission and um, and involving them in co-designing um, you know local systems and embracing that knowledge and that leadership. Um, so yeah, that's that's a bit of an overview of uh, the twelve strategies. Um, Paul, you were talking about before about the participation loop. <laughs> yeah, I think I jumped ahead, but um, yeah, the participation <laughs> loop is is about us um, uh, participating in all things at our country. And when you think about the how how things move around, um, whether that be season seasonality or um, um, or or, uh, or time of time of law or of time of um, of, of particular uh, cultural practices um, and how they kind of start to start to affect our, our considerations uh, and inform um, how we make decisions in in thinking about the circular economy and the S strategies uh, when we're applying that in our in our um, in our designs in our in our in our business um, uh, systems and things like that. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so there was, there's an example here of um, 
of example of applying the 12 S strategies. And this example was through, um, you know, how could we develop better affordable housing with country centered circular economy model in Gippsland? So that was a kind of high level view of that. And then, um, you know, uh, another view of the strategy is looking at, um, you know, country centered circular economy benefits of affordable circular housing. So there's a, um, a kind of overview there, just mindful of our time. Um, so I'll just skip through that. And then um, we've got a few projects um, going along. Um, um, I'll hand this to you, Paul. Um, yeah, so so we we presented the um, uh, the um, country centered circular economy model at the twenty twenty three circular circularity conference, um, and as a result of that, have made some really important um, connections partnerships. One of them being Sustainability Victoria, um, that have have now embedded um, so country centered circular economy as a as a strategic. Um, uh, priority within their, their new strategic plan. So we're working with them. Land and Wardens Corporation um, has has a range of business activities such as a, a bush cafe, uh, a um, a tourism business, and uh, and uh, some uh, trials for oyster farming. So um, just starting this week, actually um, going going down to down to there to um, introduce the model and, and explore how we can um, apply the strategies into those existing business activities and and how do we um, create an uplift in 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 that organisation, and then and then expand that out into its into its um, community business partners and, and so forth to to take a leadership role in the circular economy on on Gunai Kurnai country. And that is it for now. <laughs> uh, Kenny, bye everyone. Thank you. Uh, it's 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 a really uh, exciting time that we've. Um, design this model, and now we're now we're testing it, and we'll we'll continue to refine that, and and we'll be you know taking it to other groups to to also uh, hopefully test the model and 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 learn how how it can be adapted in in different ways. Um, totally amazing. Thank you, um, Paul and Damien.